Tall law was aimed at protecting our right to defend ourselves. Yeah, but as KSL investigator Daniela Rivera found out, that self-defense law is coming under fire from both prosecutors and victims of crime for its unintended consequences. Oh, he just would light up a room when he walked in. I know you hear that a lot, but that really was our quarry. Memories and photos are what's left of a life cut short. He was the best friend anybody could ever have. Kay Lynn Stafford says it was an act of kindness for someone her son considered a friend that led to Corey Haney's death in March of 2019. He was needing a place he had nowhere else to go, and Corey said, come, come live with me. And uh, next thing we knew, I get a horrible phone call from the police department. Once a roommate, now a suspect. Jesse Bruce is charged with murder. He told police he killed Corey in self-defense. Now, Kaylin worries the charge could be dismissed without a jury ever hearing the case. So how can that be? It's possible under House Bill 227, a new self-defense law that went into effect in May. In our system, a preliminary hearing has to establish probable cause to bring charges. At trial, prosecutors have to prove those charges beyond a reasonable doubt. But a claim of self-defense now triggers a new process, requiring prosecutors to prove with clear and convincing evidence that the accused did not act in self-defense. And they have to do that before the case goes to trial. Prosecutors say it's a high bar for a pretrial hearing, especially when they're still working through the evidence. If we can't meet that, then the case is thrown out. It's, it's, it's just jettison. Salt Lake County District Attorney Sim Gill says the law is already impacting cases. Well, this is just a sampling of the collateral consequences of House Bill 227 getting passed. Those court papers represent people charged with serious violent crimes who are now demanding justification hearings under the new law. Jesse Bruce is one of them. His October trial was postponed once again, and now a justification hearing is scheduled for January. Even if prosecutors are successful. Corey's mom says it's an extra step in a process that's already painfully long. It's excruciating. It's another brick in our backpack. This is going to continue to clog our criminal justice system and re-victimize victims. It's better to let nine guilty people go free than it is to uh, convict one innocent man. Mitch Velos is a Utah defense attorney and author. One of his books examines self-defense laws in all 50 states. It's just a little higher burden of proof. That's how he learned about a unique portion of Florida's Stand Your Ground law. And then I thought, hmm, let me mention that to the legislature. So this law was born from your research for the book. Right. House Bill 227 brings Florida's justification hearing process to Utah. The intent? Hesitating even a split second can get you killed. Velo says people should be able to act in self-defense without worrying about the cost of defending themselves later in a trial. The risk of dying should be on the criminal or the assailant, not on the defender. And that's why I proposed this law. Outside of Florida and now Utah, Velos did not find any other state with this specific legal process. Are we a leader or are we the guinea pig? No, no, we're a leader. We are unfortunately uh, a very terrible guinea pig here. Because Gill says the new law comes at a cost. And we warned of these collateral consequences. Those were ignored. His office and others did warn lawmakers as the bill went through committee hearings. They will be requested, we think, um, with an incredible frequency, taxing the courts in a way that is really untenable. This is a new section of code that basically copies and pastes from Florida statute. On the House floor, the bill's sponsor, Representative Carrie Ann Lisenby, encouraged fellow lawmakers to support to the legislation. Currently, individuals who use their firearm in self-defense are subject to prosecution and often a costly jury trial. Both the House and Senate passed the bill with less than 15 minutes of debate. But since the law went into effect in May, Gill says it's not just impacting cases involving gun owners. I have one person who's stabbing another person. I have another person uh, beating somebody over the head with a rock. And these are all now becoming uh, evidentiary justification hearings. The case surrounding Corey's death, too. This is not even a gun case. No, it wasn't. He was stabbed, um, brutally horrible. It was horrible.
Kaylin says Corey was unarmed and stabbed multiple times. Anyone under existing law can defend themselves. Allison Anderman and is senior counsel with the Giffords Law Center. Both Anderman and Gill say the right to self-defense is already built into the tradition of the criminal justice system. So it's not giving us anything new but it is costing us a lot. People could always claim self-defense, they say, but now the decision shifts from a jury to one person, a judge. The Utah legislature has given people a get out of jail free card for murdering other people. Did you consider that this law could incentivize frivolous self-defense claims? If we look at the statute as a whole and we weigh all of the provisions in the statute, I am not concerned with that. In fact, we sat down with Representative Lizenby to share what we learned and how the law she sponsored is impacting Corey's family. Uh, I do think this is a well-balanced statute, but again... But this interview that. ended abruptly. So, you know, you asked me for four questions and you've gone well beyond and outside the scope of those questions. Oh, so. Re Representative, you're still mic'd up. We'd like to continue speaking with you about this. Bill. We don't send interview questions, but we did email Lizenby four topics we'd like to cover, including how the new law is working. Two days later, Lizenby agreed to continue the conversation. I believe it's functioning in the state. She told us the law was intended to address politically motivated prosecutions, but could not provide examples of that happening in Utah. There may be cases. I don't know of any, but I do know that they are happening. But you don't know of any specific ones, you just know they're happening. I think I just answered that question. Lizenby said after reaching out to several groups and agencies, she doesn't believe there are serious issues with her bill. And nobody could, could back up the assertion that there are broad concerns out there. The KSL investigators reached out to the top prosecutor in every county in Utah. Most told us because the law is so new, it hasn't impacted them yet. In six counties with scheduled justification hearings, none of the prosecutors support the law. One is undecided, two neutral, three are against it. Fundamental to our criminal justice system is our jury system. That includes the prosecutor in Juab County, who had a murder charge thrown out after an August justification hearing. The presiding judge called it the most difficult decision he's ever been asked to make and hoped lawmakers would take notice. I hope they will evaluate whether this new statute has had the results they intended. Troy James Pexton claimed he was justified after shooting his friend while breaking up a drunken brawl. A jury could have reached the same decision after evaluating all the evidence, but the family of Michael Cossey, the man killed, will never know. We all feel the justice system has no doubt failed us. And for those who will undoubtedly believe today that justice has not been done, I encourage you to seek out your representatives and discuss your concerns. Lizenby stands by the outcome of that case. And so he shouldn't have to face a jury trial. He should be able to avoid that emotional and legal expense. She says people who use self-defense in Utah are victims. What I did, I heard from victims and I acted and that's the result, HB 227, and I'm grateful that I could represent those victims. I think it's very difficult for victims. Laurel Hanks is an attorney who helps a different kind of victim, not the accused, but people who've lost loved ones and want answers. Honestly, I don't even know what to tell them because there, there are no words to describe um, what they've lost. What would you want legislators to know? I hope they would get more information about how this impacts real people. People like Kay Lynn, a mom facing another holiday season without her child. Her chance for justice now hanging in the balance. It's my son's life, you know, he's gone. He can't come back and he needs his story to be heard. He needs a jury to make that decision. Liz and B told us the unintended consequences of this self-defense law can be remedied with an appeal process, but we learned the Attorney General's office is the only agency that can appeal felony cases. Prosecutors wanting to appeal are at the mercy of the AG, and they have just 30 days to act. Should new evidence come to light after that, it is simply too late. Yeah, a lot to sort out. It is a complicated mm -hmm. issue. Absolutely. Yeah. Very complex. Yeah. Danielle, thank you. Thanks.